Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Dr. Renee Jeffries Heil. I am the chair of the Exercises on Campus Committee, and I am super excited that you could join us today for our Exercises Medicine 101 webinar. And this is a series of webinars that we'll be doing monthly, talking about issues associated with Exercises Medicine on campus. I am incredibly excited to have two speakers with you today. Dr. Karina Winters, um, who was um, launched the Exercises Medicine on Campus initiative, and Dr. Z and Zach. Papilia, who is running the Exercises Medicine Initiative at Penn State, and he started it when he was a student there. So I'm going to turn it over to the presenters. We're going to ask that you, if you have questions, there's a chat bar at the bottom of your screen. Feel free to type them in. We're going to hold all questions to the end, and then Lisa will be moderating that um, for us at the end. So thank you guys so much for joining. Look, Hope you enjoy this webinar series, and hope you will come to some in the future as well. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, my name is Dr. Karina Winters, and welcome to Exercises Medicine on Campus 101. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I am an associate professor of kinesiology at Jacksonville University, and I'm the outgoing chair of the Exercises Medicine on Campus Committee, and I also serve on the Exercises Medicine Advisory Board. So today I'd like to provide an overview of exercises medicine on campus. I want to give you a little bit of the history, how it all began, discuss the registration process if you have not yet registered, discuss the recognition program, and briefly touch on exercises medicine on campus month. So I was at the spring 2008 National ACSM meeting where Dr. Bob Salas, who began Exercises Medicine on uh, Exercises Medicine, the Global Initiative, and then Surgeon General Steve Galson presented. I felt very strongly about EIM as an initiative. At that time, I was working at Chatham University, and I was tasked with not only teaching within the exercise science program, but also developing student and employee wellness initiatives. And this initiative really spoke to me. Physical activity initiatives aren't new, but I really felt strongly that EIM would be something that would be sustainable and something that would actually work very well on a college campus. So uh, after the presentation, I went up to Dr. Salas and I started to discuss how I thought a university setting would be wonderful to implement EIM. We have all of the experts that are necessary to implement EIM, and we have a, a very important population, our students, our college students, and who are a very pivotal part in their lives of either engaging in physical activity and creating the lifelong habit or not. And so we began our conversations, and in May of 2009, we launched Exercises Medicine on Campus at Chatham University. And what we did at this particular gathering, we brought in uh, other leaders at local universities. We brought in uh, legislators, those in office. We brought in health insurance companies and other individuals that we thought would help us to determine what EIM on campus would look like. And so, we came out with a, a, a couple things. Uh, one of them was, what are the connections that, that we make with respect to exercises medicine on campus? So we know that we have university faculty and staff that will serve as our experts and serve as our liaisons and our service representatives to help our students. We have our healthcare providers with student health services and now a counseling center. And then we have our health fitness professionals. So these would typically be I mean, they could be in the rec center, they could be kinesiology or exercise science faculty, they could come from a number of different areas. We determined at this first meeting that EIM on campus can't be a one-size-fits-all. We have very different, distinct universities and colleges. We have private and public, we have rural and urban, and we have a lot of other aspects that make EIM on campus unique. We also realized that we wouldn't just be incorporating the EIM solution, what has become the EIM solution, that rather than just 
measuring physical activity as a vital sign and the subsequent referral process, we knew we could do a lot with respect to some other areas, screenings, uh, education and awareness, and really engaging our students to help be those methods of change and set an example for the campus community. So I developed a EIM on campus model. And the model looks something like this. So if we look at the various departments, meaning uh, if we're looking at different departments on campus, academic departments, we can see a lot of collaboration between these different units. So we have kinesiology and exercise science faculty, we have public health and physical therapy faculty, we have physical education and adaptive physical activity faculty, OT faculty, PA faculty, and then some that you might not consider, like the communication departments and computer science, and all working together to help improve technology and to coordinate this effort on campus. Then we also have what I would call our service representatives. We have the counseling center, the health center, the recreation center, and residence life. And residence life is a different color, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, these are the areas that they also have money, but they also are, are providing important services for our students. And these would be uh, where we might see referrals happening if we're looking at gold level, which I'll talk about in a second. And I have residence life is both um, the yellow area, but also the red, because these are our other entities on campus. This is where pockets of money can be and services are provided both to students and as well to employees. Administration is huge. Getting administrative buy-in is key because typically in university or college mission statements, it includes some kind of wellness component. And you can leverage that with respect to either gaining initial funds or uh, for sustainability. So what is EIM on campus? Um, EIM on campus calls on universities and colleges to promote physical activity as a vital sign. This would be really what I say is creating a culture on campus of daily movement as a facet of life. This is really important to us. Um, when we think about physical activity as a vital sign, understanding that and championing our students to, to challenge their friends and other students to make sure that they make that change. And also to create collaborations between um, those in campus community that service our students and who live and who work and who study here. And that's very important. So uh, I'd like to talk a little bit now about the beginning. So when you look at these slides, these are actually the slides, uh, some of the slides when I went to different institutions to to help. Um, so typically I would go either help in the planning stages, help with the launch, or somewhere in between. Uh, so the first institution uh, that I went to, one of the first actually, was Penn State University. Uh, back in March of 2010, uh, their student organization, and Zach might be able to speak to this a little bit later, invited me up to give a talk on EIM on campus and I thought that was wonderful because students were taking the charge. I came back on in October of 2012 to uh, give another presentation on EIM on campus and this time there were a lot of faculty and other people there and they, they were much more engaged. So another example of where EIM on campus started with the students really and you can see a lovely picture of Dr. Proctor. Uh, Penn State has done an amazing job and Zach's gonna tell uh, in a little bit, some of the specific things they've done, but Melissa Bopp and Dave Proctor and Zach and the entire group there has just been doing an amazing job. And I'm very excited that they progressed and recently were able to achieve gold level status, which wasn't so easy um, at a large institution such as Penn State. Um, you'll see too that we had an older label. This was our original exercises medicine on campus label um, back in the early 20, 2012 era. So uh, the next university, when um, I launched in Chatham, uh, we uh, then got recruited to Slippery Rock University. And Slippery Rock University uh, was very different. They already had uh, 
things in place that were consistent with gold level. Um, the curriculum was very solid and they were already having a capstone class where students who were faculty supervised would get a client and would see them through 12 weeks of individualized exercise assessment and prescription. And so we did an official EIM on campus launch in um, April of 2011. And so that was very exciting. We had ACSM representatives come in and we officially launched EIM on campus at SRU then. Um, the other thing that we did um, was Dr. Kim Smith, uh, who was one of our rock stars, literally at, at Slippery Rock University, got a grant from Highmark for over $13,000 to implement EIM on campus initiatives. It was a wonderful opportunity for us to be able to promote EIM and have the funds to do so. And on the right, you'll see um, one of the initiatives that she led and we did was called Walk the Rock. And so you see, we have a number of employees who have their pedometers on. Now keep in mind, this was back in 2011 in the fall and um, subsequently for years. And uh, Dr. Smith is now at Catawba College doing wonderful things there. But this is a photo uh, for a flyer that we had. And the saying was, show me yours and I'll show you mine. And it, it was related to steps. And it was a wonderful way for people to get engaged and have friendly competition with respect to how many steps did you get today? Uh, so a lot of fun there. Uh, one of the next institutions that I had the pleasure of visiting twice, actually, uh, was Auburn University. And wow, uh, what amazing things they're doing as well. Um, led by Bill Jackson, who also served on our EIM on campus committee, Auburn's come a long way. I initially went down for the planning stages. Uh, interestingly, they were doing a lot of screenings out of the School of Pharmacy. And so they would refer patients over to their rec center. If you've never been in Auburn University's rec center and you don't get an opportunity to go, you should definitely look at it online. It is amazing. They have a track that spans two floors and they've done so much um, in this area of EIM on campus. They have uh, Be Well huts and they, they do some just amazing things with respect to that and just spoke with Bill the other day and he said that they're expanding and they have many certified personal trainers and students really take advantage of this opportunity for, so um, we're very excited for them as well so they're a gold level institution. Uh, right about that time, uh, I also went to visit the University of Colorado at Colorado Springs when they launched Exercises Medicine on campus. Again, a graduate student, Rachel Klein, um, was the initiator of this initiative and they had really awesome swag. You can see Exercises Medicine with Altitude. So I thought that was a lot of fun. Uh, I'd like to show a quick video uh, on this. Interestingly enough, uh, UCCS, when Rachel left, kind of fell by the wayside and we didn't hear from them for a while, but luckily they're back in action and back to gold level. And um, I'll discuss in a minute that that's why we uh, changed our registration process and I'll explain that a little bit later. So hopefully this video works. Remember, this is in 2012. And thanks for staying with us, students at the University of Colorado getting a new dose of medicine instead of medication the health department handing out prescriptions for exercise. Now, this is part of the Exercise is Medicine campaign to promote a healthier lifestyle. Instead of a physician's note, students may be referred to the campus rec center for a free group fitness pass, gym orientation, or fitness assessment. Which organizer says the program is important. I think it's important for students to choose exercise over medication, especially as they are starting um, out their college career, wondering where their life is going to take them. And to get into a routine of being physically active, being healthy. The organization is hoping to take the program to initiative to other facilities throughout the community. Over. 
All right, I apologize if that was loud enough. All right, so just one example, and again, back in 2012, so, whoopsie, excuse me. Sorry about that. All right. Okay, so six years ago, uh, already making a difference with exercises medicine on campus. Um, another institution, Georgia Southern University, at um, that time run by Dr. Bridget Melton, invited me down for their launch of EIMOC. And an interesting thing about Georgia Southern is they received funding from their transportation system because so many students were using the bus that it was costing a lot of money. And so they were encouraging walking and um, they started right away with not only the health center, but accepting referrals from the counseling center as well, which has become very popular with exercises medicine on campus. Um, other area of excitement for exercises medicine on campus as we're talking about the history is um, in January of 2016, I was invited to a um, international conference on exercises medicine on campus in Beijing, China at Beijing Sport University. And it was such a wonderful experience. We actually had to turn away over 50 university representatives that wanted to come. So we know that this initiative is becoming global and we have a number of global institutions that are recognized currently and it, that continues to grow. So we're very excited for the program in that regard. And then uh, I'd like to just a shout out to Jacksonville University. Uh, I came here a little over a year ago and I'm so excited to help them reach goal level status. They've been silver level institution uh, for the last few years. And a couple of things that we're doing uh, right now is uh, our jaywalkers you see on the left we have walking maps around campus that we have permanent signage and we have a group who meets weekly and we call us the jaywalkers because we walk on the wild side but we really do follow the rules we just like to have fun and another I'd like to point out uh, we do a lot of campus programming and when I've gone to different institutions we always discuss establishing exercises medicine on their respective campus, and then thinking about reaching out into the local community. And I'd, I'd like to just share for a minute, and there's the website there if you'd like to go to it. Uh, we, uh, one of my colleagues, Dr. Heather Hausenblas here at Jacksonville University started Yoga on the Green as part of our exercises medicine on campus programming options. And she um, brought in yoga for change. Um, Catherine Thomas was actually a Navy pilot and became injured and could no longer fly. And she found yoga as, um, as a means to uh, refresh her identity and give her life purpose. And then she has gone on. Uh, she has an Upworthy video. That she has this amazing business where she provides yoga to vulnerable populations, um, to those that are incarcerated, those who have addictions, uh, vulnerable youth and others. And she provides this at low to no cost. And it's amazing, an amazing program. And JU is just thrilled to be able to bring them onto our campus and work with them in collaboration for what we're calling um, movement for change here at Jacksonville University. So just a couple of things that institutions are doing. So many, we have so many institutions who are just coming on, uh, like the University of Alaska, Anchorage, and many others who are just interested in making a difference. So I'd like to switch gears now and talk very briefly about the registration process. And I know that this doesn't apply maybe to some of you, but some of you who have not yet registered, uh, we did change this process back in 2014 uh, because we found that people were registering different people at the same institution. And so we wanted to coordinate the efforts and, and understand really who was doing what with respect to EM on campus and how we could help. So uh, these are the pro this is the process. If you go to the bottom of the screen, you'll see that we I have a link 
Um, registration is quite simple and we need this information because um, this allows us to know who the go-to person is. So um, you need a supervisor advisor. This is the go-to person for ACSM. Um, this is the person who, who, with whom we would contact. Uh, this would be the person that other people would contact. Uh, we also require a healthcare professional. And you can go onto the website for the action guide to get more information. We also require a health fitness professional uh, with either a terminal degree or someone who is NCCA certified. And then we also require at minimum two student representatives because we strongly believe about um, our student champions of this cause and how impactful their statements as well as their actions are for creating this culture of movement that we want to see on campus. Um, so you get those people together and then you go on to our web page and officially register. Some of the things that you receive would be resources that we have, um, a customizable EIMOC logo. So you'll see it up on the right hand corner here. So our logos, this is the third change that we've made. We've updated and very excited about the personalization of it. So thank you, um, our EIM staff who's, who made that happen. Networking opportunities, you get to have your EIM website for your institution up on our, under our registered campus. And you have to be a registered campus to be able to apply for recognition. These are our registration statistics since we changed our system to the registration process. So we're very, very excited. And you can see that not only do we have national representation increase, we have a global representation increase as well. This is great for our sponsors too because they wanna know who's participating in EIM on campus activities. So another way that, that we wanted to be able to celebrate as I went from institution to institution and talked to different people, I found out that people were doing some pretty amazing things. And we wanted to have a way to celebrate those. So we created the EIM on campus recognition program. And this program was de designed to acknowledge on um, three different levels. And we thought that was important. What campuses are doing to promote EIM. Uh, the first level is bronze. So this is really the first step. I would say a lot of institutions are perhaps doing most of what the bronze level recognition requires, and that would be um, promoting the importance of physical activity daily to uh, providing opportunities for the campus community members to be active, securing a university president or mayoral proclamation, which all can be found on the Exercises Medicine website. So that's bronze level. Silver level would be uh, where institutions provide education and awareness uh, for specifically exercises medicine as an initiative, provide screenings integrated into their curriculum, whether it be the core curriculum or um, kinesiology, exercise science, and really discuss physical activity as a medicine. Um, they might even provide exercise counseling for um, for those students or perhaps employees. And the gold level, which is currently the highest level of EIM recognition, is incorporating the EIM solution. And that means that these institutions must assess physical activity as a vital sign. That's absolutely necessary to earn gold level status. And then um, they also need to either create a referral system whereby um, they can get exercise prescription, create a database, and do a number of other things. And again, all this information is up on the website for you to review. These are our recognition statistics. So you can see, again, um, we had a lot, um, very large showing. We actually had 88, um, both national and international uh recognized campuses this year and the number just keeps growing and we're very excited that there's such interest it, what a wonderful thing to to be recognized it, you you get a certificate of achievement for your institution it's wonderful pr for an institution you get the acknowledgement on our exercises medicine website uh social media attention and usually institutions provide their own and then if you're present at our award ceremony every year at the national meeting you also get uh, 
um, a photo with just your institution, and we typically take a group photo as well. Uh, these are our 2018 recognized programs, those who could be in attendance. Uh, again, we had 88 total. Uh, very excited about that. Finally, I would like to discuss Exercises Medicine on Campus Month uh, before Zach then I turn it over to him and he can uh, talk about Penn State's successes. Uh, we deemed October Exercises Medicine on Campus Month because most institutions aren't fully functioning in May for EIM month. And October is a time of homecoming and it's an exciting time. Uh, I just provided two examples and, and the uh, web pages below of different institutions and how they celebrate EIM on campus month. Um, we also have a, a video mascot challenge again this year. The inaugural one was last year. As you can see, Illinois State on the left declared exercises medicine month for October back in 2015, and they continue to um, provide programming for that month, as well as University of Hong Kong. And they, um, this, their website here is from 2018. So very excited about all of the workings with EIM on campus. Thank you so much for your support. We're very happy to have you. Thank you. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, I am excited to share with you some of the things we have going on here at uh, Penn State with our Exercise in Medicine on Campus initiative. As Renee said, my name is Zach Papalea. I am the director of the Exercise in Medicine on Campus here at Penn State University at University Park. And I'm a member of the Department of Kinesiology, as well as running the Center for Fitness and Wellness, where we do uh, health and fitness assessments, health education, and outreach programs for students, faculty, and staff. I first encountered exercise as medicine back in 2008 when I saw Dr. Bob Salas speak about it at an ACSM Health and Fitness Summit. At that time, I was a uh, sophomore undergraduate. And then, uh, you know, it really caught my attention. I was able to work through uh, the kinesiology club and work with some of our faculty and staff at the time and officially bring it to our kinesiology club here at Penn State in 2010 as an undergraduate, right about the same time that Karina came out and gave her first presentation to the Penn State community. And since then it has really grown and expanded and, and we've had a ton of success. One interesting thing about Penn State that I, I'm not sure if everyone is familiar with, but we have over 20 Commonwealth campuses spread throughout the state as well as a medical school and a uh, technical school and two law schools. So that network of campuses from uh, you know west to east, north to south, all across the state really provide us a unique opportunity to not only you know, develop the main exercises medicine initiative here at University Park, but then expand it statewide and really have an impact on all of our undergraduate students, all of our faculty, staff, and all of the community members that are affected by these campuses throughout our Commonwealth. Currently, we have eight campuses participating in exercises medicine on campus, and four of them are formally recognized. So University Park, where, where I work, is a gold level campus. Penn State Berks in the, uh, in the Philadelphia area is a uh, a silver level campus, and then Penn State Harrisburg is also silver level. Penn State Hershey, which is our medical school, is bronze level. And we're working with a few more campuses right now to get them up to speed and able to apply for recognition uh, for the 2019 uh, ACSM conference. Our program has grown, like I said, to be a pretty extensive web of services, but it's really important to realize that none of this happened overnight. We started within the kinesiology club just as a student-led initiative for a couple of years. And it really took some time for it to grow into all of these different things that we're offering now with exercises, medicine on campus week, mobile exercises, medicine, uh, exercises, medicine everywhere. And I'm gonna kind of take everyone through all of these different facets of our program today, just hopefully to share some ideas and some of the successes and some of the failures that we've had here at Penn State and hopefully provide some ideas that you may be able to implement on your campuses, wherever you may be. If we look at the timeline, again, we started back in 2010. So we were entering our ninth year of exercises medicine on campus here at Penn State. And it took until 2012 until the initiative was really formally recognized by our department. And since then it has been a steady, steady growth and a real ramp up right around 2016, 2017, which is the point uh, at which our department and the college 
that the, our Department of Kinesiology operates in, the College of Health and Human Development, uh, they formally established a director of exercises medicine on campus and really allocated the resources necessary to take our program to the next level. And I'm, I'm eternally grateful for that. I think it has been a huge difference both in our program and in the impact of the program because we've really been able to expand our scope from just that one exercises medicine week to all of these different services all year long. Um, the main goal of exercise and medicine on campus here at Penn State is to ensure that every Penn State student graduates with a functional understanding of the importance of lifelong physical activity and healthy living. And as of January of 2018, we've started to expand into faculty staff wellness as well. So we're hoping that our program can grow over the next few years so that this statement, it just reads everyone in the Penn State community achieves a functional understanding of the importance of lifelong physical activity and healthy living. So as I said, there's a bunch of different components to our program. The keystone of our Exercise as Medicine initiative is Exercise as Medicine on Campus Week. This, uh, this year will be the seventh annual Exercise as Medicine on Campus Week. Uh, we also do mobile Exercise as Medicine where we travel off campus, Exercise as Medicine everywhere where we get alumni involved, uh, the employee initiative, we do a video series, and a bunch more. As far as EIMOC week goes, we usually coordinate this with homecoming. It's really nice, like Karina said, that October is Exercises Medicine Month because that usually is when our homecoming week falls as well. So we lead up to homecoming with Exercises Medicine on Campus Week, during which we set up outside from 9 a.m. till about 3.30 or 4 p.m. every day. We pick a different high traffic location on campus, and we bring in a bunch of different university and community partners to join us. So we'll have tables set up, we'll have challenges, games, pretty much anything we can think of to get students, faculty and staff to stop, engage with us, learn a little bit about the program and get a little bit active during those days. Uh, Exercises Medicine on Campus Week kicks off with, uh, with our Dean's Walk. The Dean of the College of Health and Human Development has been enormously supportive of this initiative and she has led us on a one mile walk around campus every year for the past six years. We're actually bringing in a new dean this year. Our, our, formal, our former dean, Nan Crowder, has retired, but the new incoming dean has, has continued the support and we're very, very thankful for that. We usually try to get around 150 to 200 faculty, staff, and students to show up for this event and some sort of campus celebrity, whether it's our mascot or one of the athletics coaches or a, a prominent alumni, someone who can really bring the attention to the Dean's Walk. We spend about a half hour walking around campus and then we finish it up with a free lunch for everyone who's attended. And it's, it continues to grow year after year. We provide t-shirts for anyone who comes out for it. And it's a good way to kind of boost the awareness of exercise as medicine, particularly among our college's faculty and staff. Uh, throughout our Exercise in Medicine on Campus Week, we give out a bunch of different prizes. In the past, we've given out Frisbees, water bottles, drawstring bags, Fitbits, headphones. This year, we're getting phone wallets, uh, the little thing that sticks on the back of your cell phone to carry your ID card, which seems to be pretty popular with our students, especially when they're taking their ID and their phone with them to the gym. They don't have to carry anything else then. We're also getting some cooling towels with our logo and with the Exercise is Medicine logo so that students in the and all of the fitness centers on campus can actually be carrying branded EIMC uh, apparel and equipment with them. Uh, every night after the main event, we feature a special event uh, in partnership with one of our different on-campus partners that usually goes from around 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. So as class lets out, as work lets out for our faculty staff, we have some sort of free activity on campus. Um, the most successful and the most popular one over the last couple of years, we wrap up Exercises Medicine Week on the evening of that Thursday, so the last day of EIMOC week, with a free outdoor yoga class. All we ask is that people bring their own mats, we provide the instructor, we get the sound system set up, and we usually do it on, the, on a big green space on campus, usually out front of our student union. So it's a high visibility area, we can fit dozens and dozens of people into that space, and it, it gets everybody moving and relaxed just in time to ramp back up for homecoming weekend uh, starting that Friday. This year, we're also offering some free workouts with our club CrossFit organization. Our outdoor adventures group is setting up some archery tag demonstrations and some rock climbing and a bunch of different outdoor recreation opportunities. We're having a kickball game between our faculty and our students. Um, 
really it's it's whatever anyone approaches us with throughout the year saying this might be a good fit we find a way to make it happen during eimoc week we feature it as a special event and we try to broadcast it as much as we can to boost participation and just show people that you know exercise isn't just something they have to do in the gym it can be anywhere on campus with anyone that you want to do it with or by yourself whatever works as long as you're moving that's what's important our mobile exercises medicine program is where we take our initiative and we take it off campus. So we go to both our Commonwealth campuses, particularly those eight that are currently working with us to develop their own exercises medicine on campus program, as well as non-university entities. So every spring for the last few years, we've actually traveled down to Washington DC to the Library of Congress where we set up and we do mobile health screenings there, uh, glucose testing, cholesterol testing, blood pressure checks. And we're very fortunate to have an alumni connection there. That's what brought us to the Library of Congress. But we also do outreach around the community here and throughout the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Uh, last year, 2017, marked our first mobile exercises medicine week where we actually had one week following our on-campus week where we went off campus and traveled to all of these different Commonwealth campuses. We visited Penn State Harrisburg, Penn State Hershey, and Penn State Altoona. This fall, following our Exercises Medicine on Campus Week, which kicks off on October 8th, we're going to be traveling to Penn State Harrisburg again, Penn State Hershey uh, for the second time, and Penn State Hazleton, which is a new participant in our Exercises Medicine on Campus program across the Commonwealth. And then finally, we have an alumni-based initiative called Exercises Medicine Everywhere. This is where we're targeting alumni all across the nation to get involved. All we ask is that they do something active throughout Exercises Medicine on Campus Month. So from the first day of October to the last, if they get active, if they post a picture or a video on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and they tag us in it, they get entered into a drawing for Penn State merchandise, gift cards, t-shirts, water bottles, any sort of giveaway that we can we can scrounge together, we'll send out to our alumni and, and broadcast their successes on our social media as well to show that you know this program doesn't, it's not just exercise mattering on campus, it's wherever you are, whatever stage of life you're in, exercise is important. Uh, as far as the vital sign goes, this was one of the biggest hurdles that we had to get over here at Penn State. It took until January of 2017 for the physical activity vital sign to officially be implemented at our university health services and our uh, psychological counseling center. This was a, a big project by Dr. Melissa Bob. She's the faculty advisor for exercises medicine on campus. She worked very, very hard on this because our university is just is so spread out. There's so many different entities involved. Getting our university health services to implement this was a big, a big challenge, and she did a great job bringing this all together. So now we have a referral network between university health services, the CAPS Counseling Center, and our Center for Fitness and Wellness. So if a student sees a physician or a provider on campus and they're deemed uh, that they, you know, they may benefit from physical activity, they can get referred to our Center for Fitness and Wellness, or we will take them through a full fitness assessment. We can run uh, cholesterol testing, glucose, triglycerides. Uh, submax vo2 muscular strength muscular endurance body composition and then we can work with them to design an exercise program and implement it right out of our own center for fitness and wellness inside the department of kinesiology so that was a huge step in the advancement of our exercise and medicine on campus program but it was definitely a challenging process and one that took a lot of time and dedication uh, we also are trying to expand our social media footprint so we have the exercise as medicine on campus video series this we work closely with our interns to develop different topics that they might be interested in. One that we have ongoing is an interview series with different alumni who are implementing exercise and medicine on campus out in the real world, showing our students how can they leverage their degree to actually implement this message once they leave Penn State. A lot of our students think that the only way they can go with kinesiology is physical therapy or physician's assistant or medical school. And while that's a, that is a huge bulk of our graduates going in that direction, wherever you go, you can implement exercises in medicine. So we're trying to show that through the alumni video series. We also are working on some how-to videos for different exercises. We have some highlight reels of different activities that we've done. And we also, uh, participated last year in the mascot challenge. The mascot challenge was a really fun challenge, a really fun initiative put out by EIMOC and the American College of Sports Medicine. It was not easy, uh, kind of like the physical activity vital sign. It took a lot of work to get this to all pulled together, particularly because 
Uh, I'm not sure how it may be on other campuses, but here at Penn State, there's only one lion. So we had to find the lion, track down the lion, reserve his time, make the, you know, make the arrangements, write the script. And then we had about an hour of his time to film all of the scenes with a few of our interns here at the Center for Fitness and Wellness. We edited it together on our own using iMovie, uh, just a free software on Mac. And then we were able to advertise it and post it through our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We leveraged a lot of our alumni networks to get the views and the likes. Uh, and it was a, it was a really, like I said, it was a very fun challenge, a very interesting uh, experience for the interns that participated. Another thing that we have been working on is implementing exercise and medicine on campus in our freshman seminars. So freshman students here at Penn State have to take a seminar course during their first year. And we spend uh, as much time as we can to try to contact all of the freshman seminars or as many freshman seminars as we can get to. And so far we've been pretty successful in this. We have a 10 minute video highlighting all of the different ways to get active here at Penn State, uh, both on and off campus. We work with the different instructors for freshman seminars to give us one class period or one day with their students where we show this video, we provide some challenges, we may give them a tour of the Center for Fitness and Wellness, tour of the different rec centers on campus, and just kind of bring them up to speed that you know, Penn State is, is definitely an academic challenge for freshmen when they're coming in, but it has an enormous amount of, of health potential here. And, and if you don't have time to get to the gym during the day, that's okay. We have hundreds and hundreds of ways to get active both in, in, on campus and throughout the surrounding community. It's a very active community, and we're, we're trying to educate our students on that. Um, just the last couple things here. The employee initiative, as I said, started in January 2018. This is something that we're kind of, we're still pilot testing it, but it, it's getting a lot of good response. We started in the spring with a wellness Scrabble challenge. Uh, our campus at University Park is so large that we were able to have multiple buildings that start with every letter of the alphabet except for X, I believe. So the challenge was you get with someone in your office, you walk to a building every day or, or however often you can. If you can walk to that building, you earn the first letter uh, of that building. At the end of the semester, you, ha you have all of your letters. We give you a Scrabble board. Whoever scores the highest wins some prizes. Uh, this, the employees seem to respond pretty well to that. We're going to try to think of new ways and new challenges moving forward so we're not just doing the same thing over and over but there's been a pretty positive response for this and we're trying to ramp up the efforts with uh, exercises and medicine on campus for employees now as well just recently we did a health fair in partnership with penn state women's golf and athletics which was uh it was received very well um, as well the golf team came out they offered a free swing clinic free access to the driving range chip and putt contest a former sports nutritionist for Penn State Athletics came out and offered nutrition advice. And then our exercise and medicine program was there offering blood pressure screenings, prize giveaways, challenges, and just general health education. So this is a new program we're working on, uh, but so far so good. And we hope to really expand into the employee space over the next uh, couple of years. Overall, this has been a long, a long process here at Penn State. We continue to have some successes, but there's definitely been some setbacks. Uh, it's not something that can happen overnight, but the biggest thing that I found is that it's just about getting creative and finding ways to work with all of the different units on your campus, whether it's your campus recreation or your outdoor adventures, your dining commons, your homecoming committee, all of the different student organizations, club sports, whatever it may be. Most universities have a lot of opportunity for collaboration. It's just a matter of getting, getting in front of the people that matter on your campus, forming that wellness committee and, and staying in touch with them, keeping the ball rolling. Because if it's just that one exercises medicine week every October, by the time the next October rolls around, you have all of that lifting to do again and there's no momentum. So the biggest thing that we're, you know, that we've seen over the last couple of years is this building of momentum has made all of these programs easier because more people are recognizing it, more people are excited about it and more people are coming up with great ideas to implement in the next round of whatever we may be doing. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at any time. Again, my name is Zach Papalea. My email is right there, zvp5003 at psu.edu. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and, and our website. Our website will have all of the information about our 2018 programming. Uh, and again, if you have any questions or need any assistance, uh, I, I'm happy to help in any way that I can. And I think I will turn it back over uh, to, uh, to Lisa now. Thank you.
Thanks, Zach. I appreciate it. And thank you, Karina. Thank you both for sharing insights on the program, what you're doing at your universities, um, and just some background information. We have time for a few questions now. Um, so if you have a question, feel free to type it in the question section or in the chats. Um, and we'll kind of do this in a probably a round robin type fashion answering questions. Um, one of the first questions we have received is how do we determine if EIM exists on our campus? A great place to start is by visiting the Exercise is Medicine website, which is exercisesmedicine.org. If you go to the menu bar, you'll see that there is an EIM on campus section and a page specifically that lists the current schools. So you can start there. Um, if you don't see your school, chances are they haven't registered with us, but you're also more than welcome to contact us at the National Center directly and we can do some additional checking. Um, and the best email is eim at acsm.org. So thank you, Elizabeth, for that question. Uh, another question that we have is about recognition and our submission process. Um, Jason, thank you for asking that question. We are in the process of updating the recognition application, and that's why the link is not currently available on the website. That will be put up closer to the time that the application opens, which is in January. All registered campuses will receive an email in advance of the application going live with additional details. We also plan to have a specific webinar on the updated recognition process and application likely in early January. So stay tuned for details on that. Let's see some other questions. I'm going to direct this next question to Karina and Zach, if you wouldn't mind uh, both touching on it. Can you talk about the advantage or benefit for universities to participate in exercises medicine on campus from your perspective? Yes. Uh there are many advantages to do so, and I found different ones depending upon the professional and institution. One, uh, I think from a professional standpoint, there's a moral and ethical obligation that we have to share this information and to try to reduce risk and improve health outcome in our students. And I love how Zach presented on uh, what Penn State's mission is for all students graduating, and I, I feel the same way. Two, this is a wonderful opportunity to put positive spotlight on an institution. Uh, that's another reason why we created the recognition program to really highlight. So rather than the biggest partying school, it would be uh, parents and prospective students would see, oh wow, you know, the people there really care about my health. And I think that speaks for a lot, uh, not only in our field, but from a global health perspective. It's also a wonderful opportunity for a faculty member who maybe is just starting out and they're looking for both scholarship and service. So on the professional level, you can also earn both of those working toward tenure and promotion by implementing EM on campus. Sometimes, um, you're tasked to do that. Maybe you're a staff member or you're a faculty member and you're tasked with creating wellness initiatives and EIM on campus is a wonderful way to coordinate those physical activity initiatives. Here at JU we have exercises medicine on campus and we also have uh, the more, uh, I would say, comprehensive healthy campus. So I think for many reasons it's wonderful and for students as well. Um, you could create your own. A lot of kinesiology student societies will have exercises medicine on campus as their core uh, with respect to what they do and what they promote. I agree with all of that. I, I think one of the biggest things or a few of the biggest benefits that we've seen here that I think would, would be a motivator to get anyone involved. One is the experiential learning that this presents to our students. A lot of them without exercise as medicine would spend most of their time in class and only in class. They wouldn't be able to get out and engage with community members and engage with faculty staff and engage with their other students and actually be forced to apply what they're learning in class and and teach and educate and regurgitate rather than just regurgitating what they're saying, actually apply it. And I think we get a huge 
positive response from our participating students, our exercises medicine volunteers and our interns following exercises medicine week because leading up to it, they think, uh, you know, oh, we're going to go around and hand out some flyers and it's not going to be a really big deal. And they come out of it having had a really great time and realizing that there's more to their potential career than they would have realized a week before or even a day before if they're coming on these mobile trips with us. It, it really has a profound impact on their learning and their development. And another thing that I think is is often overlooked is that a lot of our universities have more resources than anyone is aware of. There's so many redundancies in a lot of universities and so many services that one or two people work really, really hard on. And then the thousands of other people on campus may be completely unaware of. So the networking aspect and the team building aspect of exercises medicine on campus, I think provides a really good opportunity to bring all of those resources together and, and see what's actually out there and, and create a cohesive message to share with people on campus and off campus that otherwise they, they may be overlooking some of the things that are, are truly beneficial to them. And then the, finally, the third thing I would, I would say about that question is, in our case at least, exercises medicine has given us an, an outlet to impact the surrounding community. You know, we, we all live here, we live in the town that the college is located in, but a lot of times we're, we're very insular. We're looking onto campus, working with our students and working with our faculty staff, and not necessarily giving back to the surrounding community but exercises medicine on campus has given us the ability to do these outreach events and go into town and offer blood glucose screenings and blood pressure screenings and getting our students to actually interact with people in the community and not just professors and not just other students is another both benefit to the students and a huge benefit I think to the community that they're actually seeing results and seeing a benefit of having this huge university right in their backyard. Thank you both. That was very helpful. Another question is, what is the future of EIM on campus? Um, will you or do you have plans to share ideas for best practices, referrals for grant opportunities, etc.? Um, I will say from the main office, um, we are one of the reasons and Renee touched on this that we are starting the webinar series is to share best practices from our campuses and to provide feedback, not only success stories, but some of the challenges that campuses have experienced in implementing EIM on campus and making the connection with the health center or the rec center or setting up that referral process. So we will be having future webinars. The goal is to have one each month and to touch on a different aspect of EIM on campus. Um, we will promote those webinars through the EIM newsletter, through our social media channels, as well as direct communication with currently registered schools. Um, I don't know if Renee, Karina, or Zach, if you have anything to add to that. Um, I, I can jump in real quick and add some things. Yes, I think that part, uh, we're, we're trying to look to share global knowledge on what works and what hasn't worked in setting up a program. We're also trying to look at establishing best practices. Um, and that is part of the reason why we're revisiting how we're doing recognition and registration. Um, and then there's some other initiatives that are going on right now that are looking at um, ideal interventions. Um, is there um, an IL ideal amount of time for schools to do an intervention in which we see the most benefit for the students and changing that behavior or moving them along the physical activity continuum to getting them to meet that 150 minutes per week of moderate activity at a minimum. Um, so all of those things are in the works, but like many things, they take a long time to sort of pull together. Um, we are always looking for inputs and um, thoughts from other individuals as well. So feel free to, um, I think Lisa is gonna try to share some emails with some people. I'm happy to um, share my email as well. Um, we love to hear from the folks who are sitting on the other side. Uh, this might be really beneficial for us. Right now we're, um, the EIMOC committee is currently looking at the action guide that has been posted on the website and updating that with the sort of most current best practices. Yeah. I same as what Renee said, uh, be on the lookout for some changes and updates. And I think really also looking at impact and sustainability are going to be what you'll see over the horizon. So stay tuned. <laughs> More to come. And one thing I'll say just in regards to what's worked and what hasn't 
is being flexible on on our end has been incredibly important you know we might create a program plan or an idea and a timeline but working with so many other people on campus you can't stick to that hard and fast you have to be flexible and figure out what works best for the overall goal of getting the message out so even though we may have had these big plans in at one instance or another and wanting to launch things in a short time frame it's better to figure out ways to work together with all the different entities even if that means you have to be flexible because in a lot of instances i don't think exercise as medicine on campus is going to be the group that's running the fitness centers for instance so you know we, we have to figure out what works for everybody and how can that fit into the overall message great we have two minutes left and two questions. We'll try and get through both of those quickly. Uh, the first one is from Kelly at UPenn, who previously led the EIMOC team at UConn. Her question is, can you share more information on how to obtain funding for EIMOC events and programs? I can start if you want. Uh, there are a number of different ways. Renee has been wonderful on the research end uh, with getting funding, but there, there are funds within universities and then there are external funds. Uh, some of the things that I've seen over the years would be uh, university administration, res life, uh, student activities if it's not the same as res life, the health center, the counseling center, different departments. Sometimes there are foundation grants within an institution that you can set up. Uh, and then I'll let Renee talk about some of the external funding and, and maybe what Zach does as well. Yeah, as far as external funding, um, I, I think if you start to look at the impact of these types of programming um, in a broader light, right? So we as exercise physiologists tend to focus on what's the impact to either improving their physical activity level or decreasing their BMI or changing their blood pressure. Um, but we've had a lot of success at FGCU at tying it to markers of a, a student academic performance, right? So if you can tie it to, as Zach said, if you can be flexible and the way that you to approach it and then if you can tie it to what is important to your stakeholders I think Georgia Southern being one of the most amazing examples that the biggest stakeholder with a pain point or an issue on campus was transportation and so transportation was will, willing to use some of their funds to try to solve that problem and they were able to solve it through exercises medicine on campus so I think that you need to sort of we need to sort of look I challenge us all to look differently at the approach to the problem than we may maybe have historically so that we can achieve what we're looking for, but then also maybe push those other campus goals forward at the same time. And in my experience, we've had to do a lot with, we've had to prove that we can do something before we were able to access funding for it. So a lot of our first tries for programs, our pilot programs have been very bare bones. You know, the flyers we're printing out are off of our copier. There's not a lot of signage and, and flash to it but just hustling it year after year and, and proving to the powers that be that yes, there's interest in this and yes, there's impact. And then slowly we've been able to get, you know, a couple hundred dollars here and $500 there. And then last year, the mascot challenge, uh, that was a thousand dollar grant. We were able to, to win by doing that video and that's gonna fund all of our mobile trips this year. So our trip to Harrisburg, Hershey, Hazleton and wherever else we go is 100% paid for now from that thousand dollars. We're just able to budget it out and expand our program. So it's just been little chunks here and there after providing proof of concept. Yeah. So I, unfortunately, we're out of time and we want to be respectful of both of our presenters time as well as you as our attendees. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you for coming to our first webinar series. I, we hope to see you back next month um, as well and check your email for that. Um, again, if you there's a few more questions coming in and we're going to try to answer those offline. Um, but feel free to contact me or Lisa. Um, and thank you, um, Zach and Karina, for sharing your contact information as well. Um, and thank you both for taking the time to to do this webinar out of what I know is both very busy days for you guys. So thank you guys all very much. Thank you for coming and we'll see you next time. Thank you for supporting UAM on campus. Thanks, bye. Bye now.